Sabrina 2000's comic, Issue 63. It starts out in a snowy mountain with a car driving around it. It would be less tedious to read the text bubble here if the writer had the decency to have it be in numbers, instead of using the word forms of those numbers, so that it'd take longer to understand and read when Shinji singing a cliché song for the road trip. Since when is he the type of dork who would do that? I thought it was supposed to seem as cool because he's a troublemaker, but he's been an idiot before that. So, this goes well with him being an idiot. Zelda tells him to stop singing. Just as I was wondering why Harvey was the one driving when Zelda's the adult, Zelda actually questions this, and even says that it's her car. Wait, since when do Sabrina's aunts have a car in this comic? Let alone a car that's apparently much faster and bigger than this one. Her car would be decades old, and therefore slower. Sabrina says that's because this is Harvey and Sabrina's trip to the cabin, and Zelda's just here to supervise. It'd still be smarter if the adult was the one driving. Landra politely says that she's happy to have Zelda here when she thinks she's not needed, and randomly says that Sabrina's being selfish as always. Why is she written like this now? This is just cringe-worthy. Sabrina is supposed to be overly altruistic without thinking of the consequences of her use of magic. Why would you take all of her good and put it in Landra? She is right that Sabrina is being selfish, but she's coming off as unsympathetic and it makes me wonder why she's here. Why would she go out of her way to hang out with Sabrina if she clearly doesn't like her? Zelda asks who the cabin belongs to. Why did it take this long? Shinji doesn't know. He found out about it online, and it said that it's spacious next to a ski resort and cheap. Harvey's worried, and Zelda's worried about the way the sky is starting to look. The girls want to check the cabin out and let the boys handle their things, which annoys Shinji. Then we have the cliché that the place turns out to be a dump after it was advertised as being a great place to vacation in. I don't know why it was like that. Zelda says that magic can fix this, but wastes time talking even while she knows that Harvey could be here any minute. She says they need a way to divert Harvey's attention, but Harvey's not here yet, otherwise he'd hear her. She could instantly start pointing to solve this problem, but instead my time is wasted with them talking and distracting Harvey. When they could very easily freeze time, making it so that only the witches in the cabin are able to move. Then they'd have all the time in the world to make the cabin what they want, instead of sending Harvey who knows where and having the rest of the plot happen to him. Better yet, they could freeze him in time like Sabrina did to Mr. Marklow perfectly fine. Already, the whole plot had no excuse for happening. Zelda is an experienced witch who's used magic for hundreds of years. You'd think she would instantly think to freeze time if time is her issue. Sabrina volunteers Jinji to go to the store with him to pick up snacks. Harvey's upset because he had been driving for four hours. Wow, he had a lot of patience. They drive off in the car unhappily, and Landra just wants to make the necessary repairs, not at a hot tub. The three girls use magic to fix the cabin up. And then the store manager tells the guys that a big storm's gonna show up. I didn't need to see this. I would have seen the storm anyways. So this is just a lot of boring, wasted panels. Also, witches can do anything, including make it so that a storm wouldn't hit the area around their car. So they wouldn't have to deal with the storm either. Shinji wishes Harvey would drive faster, but the car isn't used to these conditions that could have easily been avoided. It's not like the weather port is always right, so Harvey wouldn't be too suspicious. The car gets stuck and dies. For some reason, Shinji wastes time yelling at him, instead of pointing to instantly solve the problem. Remember the issue early on where Sabrina used magic to fix Harvey's car problems? Remember the episode of the 70s cartoon where Sabrina instantly fixed Archie's car they waste a page bickering, and Shinji gets told to walk back to the cabin, and he thinks that he can't risk using magic in front of a mortal, and Sabrina would pummel him. How is he so stupid? Since when does Shinji let himself be restricted by what Sabrina wants? He was fine with sneaking into a concert with magic. He wasn't too scared over there. Harvey would just be momentarily confused and then be thankful that the car was fixed. How would he know Shinji used magic to make the car work again? since the comic is pretending that Shinji wasn't obviously using magic all the time 
for the first few days that he was in Harvey's school. Harvey would already know that he's a witch because he was so obvious about it earlier. That's another reason this plot wouldn't have happened, because Shinji would just use magic to fix the car because Harvey already knows he's a witch. Also, he could erase his memory of the fact that the car died after fixing it. This is a guy who wanted Sabrina to fly without a broom flying license. Suddenly now he's about following the rules too much and humoring Sabrina, probably to make it up to her because of that incident, just to cause conflict, when she doesn't even have to know that he did this. Zelda has faith in Shinji to use magic and sneak a spell past Harvey. Sabrina's bored, and Zelda says she was just waiting for her to say something, and warps a table tennis table to them, and says she was a master of that back in the 20s. Landry agrees to play. Why did Zelda wait so long to do this? Also, why doesn't Zelda check on Shinji by using magic to see him? Sabrina wants to play darts. That'll get boring really fast. Salem's too chilly to move. Wait, he's a stuffed animal. That makes no sense. And Landra asks why didn't they say so and zaps up a fireplace to warm the place up. What took so long? At least I wasn't told how long it's been exactly. It makes sense that these guys are bickering because they've always hated each other thanks to Sabrina. And they've been holding that in for a while. But why would I want to see this instead of Sabrina using magic? Harvey lampshades Sabrina finding Shinji attractive, and Shinji naturally says that Sabrina has no reason to like Harvey so much because he's just a bland jock and a chicken. He says that Harvey was too scared to drive faster, or tell Sabrina how he feels. How does he know that he feels that way about Sabrina? Why was it retconned that he never told Sabrina he loved her before? Why would Shinji think he ever loved Sabrina? And I always found it distracting when a character said something with a black background without the text being contained in a text bubble that would keep my attention contained in it. It should really go without saying in a comic that the characters' dialogue should always be in text bubbles, or at least text boxes in the narration. They both have good points. Shinji is a little obnoxious, but I wish they were having this conversation while they were walking to the cabin instead of keeping the girls waiting. Then they'd be progressing the plot. Shinji wants to dig the car out of here already, and Harvey says that they agreed to wait until the storm passed first and then dig the car out together. Supposedly, it's too dangerous otherwise. Shinji walks over to behind the car. Clearly, there's nothing but a flat surface of snow-covered ground below him and behind the car. Out of complete nowhere, his foot slips when it was just buried in snow, and he falls and hits his head on the ice, and rolls down a hill that was all of a sudden near the car, but was just out of view. This could have very easily not happened. This whole plot, so I'm not taking it very seriously. Especially since there's no way a main character would be killed off. But it's waking me up that there's some stakes now because he got hurt and fell onto the frozen lake, which won't hold for much longer. There's no reason he would have moved any further after that panel where he left the car. He would have just left the car, pointed to fix the car, and stepped back inside. Sabrina is standing in front of an arcade machine, happily getting along with Landra, thank goodness. And Salem wishes he had thumbs, and he says he invented video games. He must mean in the other realm. Zelda thinks it's about time the two guys work together, and they might learn something about each other. Which is why she's staying positive and not helping them. Some time is wasted, and Harvey's glad he has the rope he used to tie their bags to the roof rack. I'm glad he explains why he has the rope so that it doesn't feel like bullshit that he has it. So he competently throws it at him, and then decides to climb down it to help. Shinji wants to use magic, but his head hurts and he's cold. The real reason should be that he doesn't want to reveal, but he can erase Harvey's memory, there's no excuse. But it would be unrealistic for him to have stayed unconscious the entire time. He worries that Harvey could fall through the ice this way. Eventually, Harvey manages to save him and get him into the car. He was holding the rope so he avoided falling to the water. Shinji thanks him, and wonders if he would actually risk his life for anyone. So he knows what Sabrina sees in him now. He finally apologizes for calling him a chicken, even though we know he's right, and gets forgiven. Harvey explains that the reason he hasn't made a move on Sabrina yet, apparently, is that he's waiting for the right moment because he doesn't want to mess things up. There's a later issue in the comic that completely contradicts this and makes it a lie in retrospect. I mean, I guess it's technically telling the truth. 
if by the right moment he means after he's moved out of his parents' house. Shinji bores me, and he suddenly says that he's still friends with some of his ex-girlfriends. Since when? How? Well, I suppose he considers Sabrina to be an ex-girlfriend, after just one date? Harvey says he doesn't know, and Shinji just jumps to the conclusion that Harvey never had a girlfriend before Sabrina. So Shinji decides to humor Harvey because he saved his life, and Harvey's more trustworthy than him. People don't stop being jealous, it's human nature. He doesn't tell Harvey why he wants to help him out, when Harvey's smart enough to ask why he wants to help him. Instead of admitting that he wants what's best for Sabrina, he wants to look cool, so he says that's because Landra's cool. He tells him to follow his lead and look sad, so I just feel sorry for Landra. She deserves better. Or maybe not because she's such an annoying friend to Sabrina and shouldn't have gone behind her back to date Shinji on her. Salem says they've gone too far because they zapped up a hot tub. I'm glad he was told to stop complaining and just jump in. Since when is Salem literally nothing but the whiny voice of reason? Salem is the guy who tried to take over the world, and he used to have a mischievous, selfish side. There's no reason for him to mind the hot tub as long as they'll zap it away once the boys come back. Normally, a stuffed animal probably shouldn't be in a hot tub, but the comic already ignored him being a stuffed animal when he said he was cold, so apparently it's just for looks. Zelda hears them coming over here, and they start zapping stuff away, but somehow Jeeves isn't zapped away. Zelda lies that the obvious butler is a bear inspector. It's obvious from his clothing that she's lying, but Harvey hasn't been given any other explanation, so I guess he just assumes he really likes dressing up like a butler. Shinji tells them why he took so long and sadly settles for Landra, who obliviously smiles. I sympathize with him here, and I hope he never tries for Sabrina again, because Harvey has a way better design, and won't get Sabrina in trouble with the Witch's Council. The story ends with a bear attack in the car, where all the snacks were, while Jeeve is outside near it. In the comedy page, Salem's keeping his eye on Sabrina and Harvey while they're studying. Why does he care? Harvey somehow consents that he's got a personality and intelligence when he thinks he's a stuffed animal. The story ends with him thinking that he never felt that way about Harvey. I have to assume that Salem never needs to blink either, since he's a stuffed animal. You'd think it would have caught Salem moving a little. Way earlier. At least when he's pretending to be a cat, he won't expose magic just by moving a little. It's way easier for him to pretend to just be a cat. This is just ridiculous. Why did this have to last more than one story? It's so selfish of her because he'd clearly rather be at home watching TV when she's at school and get to eat stuff and drink. Sabrina 2000's comic, Issue 64 Somehow Harvey won't just ask Sabrina out, even though he should know she's guaranteed to say yes, and he doesn't want anyone's help, and Shinji reveals that it's been over a month and Harvey hasn't asked her out. Again, this is just confusing. Then Shinji reveals that he's starting to actually care for Landra. That'd be great to finally put this time-wasting love triangle to rest. I'd like to go back to actual plots now. After Sabrina's shown sleeping and mumbling, she sees electricity between their neighbor and the mailman. And the same thing happens to give romantic ties to other people too. Huh? I guess she casts the spell in her sleep. Magic would be too dangerous if that was possible. Sabrina says that everyone is connected to someone. Then Sabrina decides to make two people a couple, despite the fact that she saw them as an unlikely couple. Convincing a guy to help someone get a flyer above her head for the ice skating thing. Then she wonders why she doesn't have any connections. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Harvey wastes two entire pages angsting over how he can't bring himself to ask Sabrina out. Shinji says that Valentine's Day is the only day they can actually confront Sabrina and get her to decide between them without it being weird. No, it'll still suck. Somehow Sabrina never knew how good it felt to help people out before. Who is this person I'm looking at? Sabrina feels sorry for Amy and even gets her a boyfriend. It would be pointless if she didn't date him for a very long time or even the rest of the comic after this. After Sabrina wastes time angsting to Gwen, Gwen tries to give her a valentine just to be nice after wisely saying that the guys were just shy, and Sabrina thanks her. Harvey invites Sabrina to another room and tells her to wait here. 
After a page is wasted on him thinking that Shinji won't show up after all. And I wonder how Shinji was ever late, since he's a warlock. It turns out Shinji's late because he was getting a bouquet because Sabrina would appreciate him picking the flowers himself. Even though clearly she wouldn't know whether he zapped the bouquet up or not. And there's no proof that he just picked them. So, it's an idiot's ball. When he clearly revealed that he's starting to care about Landra. So that could have been the perfect excuse to get him to stop trying to date Sabrina. Harvey tells Sabrina he's always liked her and she kisses him. And Shinji sees it and runs away. Reminding me of Mina. It feels kind of arbitrary though since he said he's starting to care about Landra. And if he still had a crush on Sabrina, then it's definitely forced that he took Landra to the dance instead of her. It seems uncharacteristic of him to sit down and be heartbroken. Wasn't he the rule breaker character? A page is wasted before finally Shinji goes to kiss Landra. How is Salem's love connection his own reflection? I guess this was a good issue, even if it was too dialogue heavy. So this time I'm actually looking forward to the next one. But it's yet another plot that had no excuse for happening, because Zelda is an experienced witch, so if she was short on time, she would have just frozen time, or frozen Harvey in time, so she'd have all the time in the world to zap some stuff that she likes to the cabin. So they certainly wouldn't have sent Harvey driving out in a storm, and even then Shinji would have just used magic to solve all those problems he had to deal with and just erase Harvey's memory if he got suspicious. Was the entire story seriously wasted on this? Why are these electrical connections even there that only Sabrina can see? The whole story is just confusing. It's an okay story to read, aside from the art, but it's really repetitive. 